Okay, YouTube. We're here continuing the LED lighting project on the A320. And uh, got the anti crash beacon, anti collision beacon installed top and bottom. Had to do an extra length of cable on this one so I can get the hatch open to get to the battery. Um, very bright white lights here. This is called a wing inspection light and it points at the wing, down the length of the wing. You guys happen to get it, oh by the way this is the cluster that is the wiring so far. Um, and you'll notice I don't have the green, I don't have the green yet, I wanted to show you how I did that here in a minute. Got the other super bright white 5mm um, LED here and then another wing inspection light. Eventually there will be two lights that straddle the shaft just behind. And then one just inside the main gear here. And same on the other main gear. Sorry about the view, guys. Not a very good view. And those are going to point forward, and they're going to come on when the landing gear come down. The landing gear doors are open just because of the way I um, plugged in the battery here a few minutes ago. This here is going to be a strobe light. Right now it's just on solid. And this here is going to be on solid. And... What I had to do is I had to take two separate LEDs and then wrap um, both sides of this sharklet, as it's referred, and um, which is like a winglet. Um, then this is one of my favorite features, and it, it turned out real nice. Even had some damage back here, which you won't notice ever in flight at all, that's for sure. But this is, of course, the tail logo light, and I've got it configured so that it just spits a little bit of light so you can see the tail identification number. And uh, here again, there's two lights. It's really hard to tell in the video, guys. Sorry about that. But what you've got is this one's going to be, well, technically, I think the top one would be a strobe. And then the bottom one is, uh, is in my case, is going to be the strobe, just because I think I'm going to get more wash onto the ground. Um, but that is going to strobe and this one's going to stay on solid. And then of course these are going to stay the way they are. So it's going to look pretty awesome here. Um, and then of course here in a few minutes I'll have the green and then the white on that other side as well. And when I say a few minutes it could be hours. So we'll turn on the regular lights here in the room and we'll just go ahead and uh, give you a closer shot of the way that this ended up. Um, very difficult installation here. And uh, of course I've got to touch up the paint here. But you can kind of see the way I had to chase that wire back through and then I just followed into the servo channel. And like I said, I've got to touch up those it's just capped over with CA right now. So it's basically encased in CA, all this is. The whole leading edge of this thing is covered in CA. Um, and it was very difficult and not much material to work with. And if I had to redo something, um, that would be one thing. The other thing is I didn't realize how bright these were gonna work out to be. And so let me just demonstrate. The wing inspection lights um, share a thousand ohm resistor, so I can unplug those here. And what you immediately notice is that you don't even need them on this plane, which really sucks because it's not a little bit of work to do these things. It's a lot of work. Um, the other thing is I may go ahead and put a guard on the front half. And that way when the lights are on, let me go ahead and get these fired back up. I might put a guard on there so that they only shine backward, which I I believe in real life the Airbus manual shows they have a, a guard that's real similar to the guard on the anti-crash or anti-collision beacons. And it's so weird because you can get online and find from Airbus a whole technical document on <laughs> the LED replacement modules for the uh, lights and everything. And the only thing I deviated from factory on this is that I brought these out just a touch further 
so that I could get up a little higher. And the reason I do that is because when I'm rolling the aircraft, I want to get that view of the red as early as possible because the strobe is actually going to ride higher, significantly higher um, on the real ones. And you can see right here, this is a, a sharklet on an A320. And this here is, is where the, there's actually a nav light and a single strobe. And then this is the brighter strobe. So that's what I'm simulating here is up high. And then um, you can see that the, I mean, it's pretty clear that the colored light is, is on the inside um, just before you get over to the leading edge slats. Then the anti-crash beacons are here. I actually have a diagram that shows exactly where they're supposed to be located, so of course I did that. So, guys, not even really dark yet, but I think this thing's going to look awesome when it's all done. Um, I know it's going to help with orientation and flight, and see, that's the thing. It always seems like a lot of work, and then you get it out at night, and the first flight just makes it all worthwhile. Um, or maybe not. <laughs> it depends on if it crashes the first flight. The landing gear light are going to be really awesome on this too, but I just simply do not have the right type of LED. I burned out two of them and screwing around when I was testing, and uh, I would have needed four anyway, so I got to go get two packages. The other thing is my exaggerated uh, leading edge slats are going to um, possibly retard my efforts because they're going to block um, those forward facing lights but I can just imagine when I come in uh, for a landing with this plane I open the gear the lights all kick on these are going to stay on I mean I may end up making those controllable um, from the gear sequence somehow maybe they're going to be half bright all the time and then they're going to get brighter when I actually close or open the gear um, but either way I haven't figured that out these things definitely at this point won't be controllable but once I get a guard on the front half, they won't be as noticeable, but they're still going to light up the wing. So these ones are, they are what they are. They're done. So and you can see I had some, uh, from the last video, I had some real minor damage here. So I just touched it up with, I think it's like a navy blue angels blue ended up matching that color really closely. Um, you get real close with good lighting and you can sort of tell, but otherwise no. So this thing is, it's just gonna be a lot easier to orient in the sky um, with these gray wings and white body against, uh, you know, like a cloudy sky. So can't wait to see it guys. Keep watching for more. I'm gonna have the green LEDs done and then uh, I have to figure out how I'm gonna tap power. I believe my next step is gonna be, of course, get the green and the white to mimic what I've got over here on the sharklet. But then I have to decide if I'm gonna go ahead and tap right off of the XT60 um, or if I'm going to go ahead and do a power tap off of uh, an EC3 or excuse me not an EC3 just a 3S connector like that in the event that I would start flying this on 4S I could build a 3S to 4S adapter so that I only tap to the fourth wire even though there is a fifth that way all my timing on my strobe circuit and the voltages and the current and the resistance will stay true uh, with a 3S. So anyway, keep watching guys. Not 100% sure how that's all going to happen. Probably I'm just going to end up tapping it off the XT60. And if I ever go up to 4S on this airplane, which by the way, it's supposed to be able to handle it, but I think I'd have to work out some... Uh, better ventilation because you can see those ESCs they're going to be packed in there tight even worse now with all this wire uh, which instantly has to go all the way in and all the way to the front this cavity opens up about doubly as wide from here forward there's a bit of a bulkhead that stops here and that's where the batteries usually stick in so this this whole area is opened up here so I'm actually going to take like an old spent prop and I'm going to make uh, a tool that will push all the wiring in and then when I need to fix something, I can pull that whole thing out and display the wires and the termination points um, to do maintenance or changes. So keep your eyes out, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It's a lot of work to do stupid videos. Bye.